Do you prefer them a lot bigger than this? Oh, look at those fangs. Well... Well, that's the first copperhead I've caught. Australian style. Oh. Okay, another one of my we're almost doing a viper series here. We're doing the American copperhead. Very different from the Australian copperhead, which is related to cobras. It is the American copperhead, which is related to, well, it is a viper. So, pencils, papers, get ready. Here we go. Okay, now to do any drawing, you need a bit of research. I went out in the field, sketched this guy, and here's my color versions of that. I'm going to do a sketch based on one of the really quick rough sketches I did in my journal. I'm using a 3B pencil, 2B, 4B, 3B, good pencils to use for drawing. Starting off with a round sort of oval shape for the head. From there, before I get too carried away, I'll mark down where the spine of the snake's going to be. I hope this is going to be pretty easy. Now, a little bend in here. So that gap there is bigger than the gap at the back there. This is a bit of perspective. So here, you're going to see this side's a little bit bigger than the other side. So as that spine goes around, it goes to the top. And so below is going to be wider. So down here is going to be wider then up the top. Can you see the gap difference between both sides of the spine? If you need to pause the video and get that right, it's fairly important to get that spacing between the spine right. As it's sort of going up, it's almost even, but as it goes or curves one way, the bit closer to us looks a little bit wider than the bit far away. So now let's concentrate on the head. Going to pop in a little bit of shape here to work out where the eyes are going to be. It's good to sort of put in some perspective lines. You've got to remember that these are also geometric shapes which go into a perspective. I'm going to pop one eye there, and because of those perspective lines, we roughly know where to put the other eye. So, a bit of an ocular scale there, a scale above the eye, and one matching there. Working out some of the scales here. I hope these scales are right because the only reference I'm really using is the sketches that I made of this beautiful animal. Try to get the shape of their head. Again, if I go too fast, just pause the video and catch up. I'm actually doing this in real time. I'm not speeding up any part of this video. You're going to see it happen in real time. So here I'm starting behind the eye to pop in some of the pattern. To find that jawline there. And while I'm doing this, I'm not pressing too hard. I'm probably pressing halfway. Because you need to leave a little bit in reserve because we're going to go in really dark later. Now let's pop a few more scales here. If you get the outside shape right, you're going to get pretty close to the right thing. A little bit of shine in the eye there. It's a close up on the eye on the left hand side there for you to see what I'm drawing there. And I'm hoping this makes it easier for you to sort of see sometimes the finished drawing on the side there. So putting down a few scales on the upper lip and putting in this pattern again. Just try to 
do a little cross hatch there. Diagonal lines one way, then diagonal lines the other way. Easy scales. Pop a little bit of shade on some of these scales here. Pit there at the front. Shape that head a little bit more. You can see I, as I press harder, I get darker. And you can do that with soft pencils. Like I say, 2B, 3B, 4B, all really cool for doing this sort of drawing. A little bit of shade behind that scale. And as you can see, the head's taking shape here. A few more of the cross hatching. And work on the other side of the head, that pattern. So I'm going to use cross hatching quite a lot in this drawing. And even though it's an easy technique, we can still get a fairly realistic effect with it. Now, one of my favorite parts of the American Copperhead is the beautiful patterns that they have. So I'm getting this pattern just coming off the neck first. But now I'm trying to work out where the pattern's going to be across the whole body. This particular species of copperhead has these beautiful hourglass shapes across the body. And I'm doing the outline and I'm just doing a little bit of shade. I am going to come back over these. So it's kind of a little marking it out at the moment. As you can see as I'm going over the line, you can see why that back spine is so important, especially for doing the pattern. But later you're going to see why it's important for the lighting. So if you're following along, if I'm going a fairly even pace here, but if I am going too fast, remember, just pause that video and catch up. Because this is a pretty leisurely draw. So most of the pattern is, like I say, this hourglass pattern which curves around the body here. That hourglass pattern does break up a bit as we get closer to the tail, but for here it's still that hourglass pattern and maybe just a little bit off there. You can sort of see here that these ones I'm doing just a little bit, you know, like they're not meeting up quite. And I'm only basing this on the larger copper head that I drew that nice summer's night in America. And so you can see how it's broken up a little bit there, but so yes, I guess the tail we're probably getting more stripy bits. So now just going to put a heavier line around here and shade this in a little bit more. So in all these patterns, I'm just doing a cross hatch. Diagonal lines one way and then diagonal lines the other way. After a while, this gets quite easy, as you can see. So those diagonal lines sort of gives a little bit of a scaly feel and you can sort of get away with this if you're just doing a fairly simple drawing like this. If you want to get a larger drawing and more detailed, you have to do the brick wall method 
And if you look at some of my other videos, I'll pop in a link in the description below on advanced scales on how you can do this brick wall method to get perfect scales. But for this, because I don't want this video to go a few hours, we're knocking this out fast. This is what I do usually in a quick sketch, just a little quick cross hatching. Now, coming back here, we're going to pop in a bit of a shadow, working out where the light's coming from. I already knew where the light's coming from because of the way I shaded the head. Sometimes dropping in a little bit of shade really does help. And this is one of the things about the copperhead where uh, you'll understand, this is where art and science comes together, you understand why the pattern is the way it is when you work on shading. But anyway, for now, you can sort of see the lights coming in this direction. You've got shadow either side. You can see I can press harder. I can get almost black with this. If you wanted to go 5B, 6B, you can get even darker. If you go more than 6B, like 8B, you're getting almost like charcoal. But this 3B seems, for me, my, my new favorite pencil at the moment. So just in my mind, if I darken those bits up, I can sort of see more easy where the light's coming from. So now in here, some gentle cross hatching. Now a little bit here. A little bit here, not completely. And of course here, taking it to the spine, not going past the spine, just cross hatching like that and this cross hatching helps give it a bit of realism it's like the shade so it gives you a sort of a feeling of scales and here I'm petering out the cross hatching a little bit but it also gives a feeling of shade as well as scales here I'm picking it up again you see where the shadow is under the snake is where I do my cross hatching. Okay, you can see it's starting to work. Going back into the pattern, and here either side I'm shading in a bit, especially on the shady side of the snake. So I have another video talking about shading uh, where you can shade leaf patterns and things like that. And that's exactly what the copperhead has. It has a, a pattern that helps it hide in, along, in amongst dead leaves. It's almost perfect camouflage when it's rolled up. Because each of these hourglass shapes looks a little bit like the shadow under a leaf. So it might take a little bit of practice. It's, well, shading is like colouring in and just applying a little bit more pressure the more dark you want it. And you can sort of see on the shady side, I make it a little bit darker. So shading can be done soft and blendy, or it can be done sort of really rough cross hatching closer together. On the light side here, I'm not pressing quite as dark as I am on the shady side. So the shady side, pressing much darker. On the light side, not so much. And sometimes drawing a picture, it's about the white bits you leave behind is almost as important as the dark bits. 
So here we're starting to get into the light. I might not press quite as hard here. So just a bit more of a gentle shade there. Then when I go on the inside, I will press darker. So here, press darker. See how that's darker? Because that's the way the shadow is causing it. So yes, leaving white bits sort of helps with the realism. You don't have to make every drawing completely detailed. This is a fairly simple drawing, fairly easy to do, and yet it does sort of carry a certain realism about it because of the lighting. So now getting in here, darkening this up a bit more. Again, you can refer to that video that I made about shading, which really helps your art. I've done quite a few on that. And, you know, if you're a long time viewer of this channel, thanks a lot. It's always great to hear from you. You can leave comments below. Let me know how I can improve these videos. Or, you know, if there's something that you're not getting, try and explain in the video and I shall try and address that in the next video.